Assalamu alaikum and welcome to tonight's live show on Imam Hussein TV. Welcome to tonight's live show. You may note over the last two weeks we covered a, a mini series, as it were, on the images of women in Shia tradition. On the flip side, tonight we'll be looking at the completeness, as it were, or the complete role of a husband to be. You will also note some weeks back we aired a program on the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Holy Ahlul Bayt, alayhim aslam, being the model exemplar, a mercy unto mankind. Naturally, the Holy Prophet, the greatest human being that ever lived, brought to the world akhlaq, a character, as it were. What sort of teachings can we take from the Holy Ahlul Bayt, alayhim aslam, and the Holy Prophet? As being the model, exemplary, role models, as it were, for being known as insani kamil, whether male or female. And therefore, it should naturally filter down to us, the masses. Previously, as we said, we've analysed women. Now in this series today, and hopefully as well next week, we'll sh we shall be looking at the completeness, as it were, for being a husband. We will also cover areas such as moving from being single as a bachelor to that making a transition of a husband. With me tonight, I'd like to welcome Dr. Sayyid Amar Naqshwani. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sayyid Amar Naqshwani. Alaykum wa rahmatullah. It's a privilege and an honor once again to have you here on Thank this you. live show. I think it's a, another great topic that Thank needs you. definitely some sort of analysis. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, inshallah, we can put some personal experiences as well with regards to this content tonight. Um, there's a lot to cover. So let's probably first, first of all start off with Perhaps the methodolog methodological issues around um, involved in the completeness of a man being complete as a husband um, is probably what I'd like to start off with. Yeah, the title's an intriguing title, The Complete Husband. I think that many of us are more on a journey towards completion yes. than actually can ever be seen as the complete husband, unless your name is Muhammad son of Abdullah or Ali son of Abu Talib. Islam. It's very rare to find a personality who can live their lives with someone where by the end of their life they are described as the complete husband. And methodologically speaking, when you're looking at this discussion, it really is contemporary, not just historic. Mm. Because we've got listeners out there who are married, we have listeners out there who are divorced, we have listeners out there who are looking to get married one day, and so it applies to all of them. And sadly, we find that there are extremes when looking at this topic of the complete husband. Right. There are ladies out there who unfortunately have lived with some of the most incomplete husbands. Yeah. We are human, we can commit sins, but there are some out there who have been severely oppressed in their marriages. Mm. Where if it wasn't for their soft-heartedness, if it wasn't for their patience, if it wasn't for their forgiving nature, if it wasn't for the kids sometimes, if we're going to be very frank, sure. there'll be a lot more breakups than what we see. I think so too. Sometimes yeah. what's sadly kept some marriages alive isn't that you're living with a complete husband nor that you're living with somebody who may be on the path of completion. But rather, you, culture dictates that if you even think of leaving this person, then you're going to be frowned upon. Yeah, yeah. Disowned. Disowned, looked at in an extremely negative mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when we address such a topic, the aim of addressing such a topic is to try not just to 
give some solace to some ladies out there who have, who have really seen some of the worst behavior, and if not worst behavior, a lot of negligence from their husbands. Yeah. Negligence uncalled for, nor taught by the religion of Islam. Sometimes taught by the arrogance of our cultures. Yes, yes. Sometimes because of the arrogance of the way that husband saw his dad treat his mom. Yeah, sure. And it's a shame that there are many out there who have been oppressed because of the behavior of those husbands who call themselves Muslim but sadly are not following the tenets of the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. And so in looking at solutions for this issue and looking at also those who are on a journey to being a complete husband, yeah. there are some out there who sincerely will ask the question, how can I be the best husband possible to my wife? You'll find that not just the Quran, nor the traditions of the Ahlul Bayt are the only sources that we can use but I think even in the world today, there are some non-Muslims who have lived an impeccable life on certain areas which we can learn from in terms of how to treat our wives. Yes. Um, and I think we're going to see as the show develops that in some cases, non-Muslims in terms of their mannerisms, in some cases in terms of their physical and spiritual development um, and in terms even of their humility and forgiving nature we can even take leaves out of their book yeah absolutely so there are a number of issues that methodologically we're going to have to try and skim through yeah. this in this tonight's uh, section and next week's inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. inshallah thank you for that so just to put some context as it were into this show uh, what i'd like to start with is really being single moving from bachelorhood and making that transition to being married and a husband, and therefore obviously a name change, immediately, overnight, having responsibilities, as it were. Now, I've been a bachelor before, um, and I'm sure other uh, men have also have been as well. So just in terms of, really, I want to put some context in terms of a contemporary edge here, not really just from a slant from perceived, old-fashioned, or even traditional traditions, but really how we can relate to the masses out there, both here in the West and also the East. What, what sort of transition should one be looking to make, as it were, gearing up to move? And we'll come to, for example, the wedding night and actually welcoming the bride, as it sure, were. Sure, sure, sure. But let's, let's just go chronologically in order, as it were, in, in, in context for just moving from bachelorhood to within minutes of having the nikah recited to being a husband. Now. Well, I, th I think uh, we all loved bachelor life. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Um, and even when you're going out with your fiance in bachelor life, it's cool because mm. you can drop her home ultimately at the end of the night. But living with someone is, you know, a completely all together different. different you know, development in one's life. Yeah. And I think sometimes us guys get married for the wrong reasons. Mm. And that could be a major obstacle in our development into being a complete Muslim husband. So either some of us get married purely out of lust. Yes. You know, I have sexual desires and I want to fulfill them. And so I get married to somebody without the idea that she has rights over me. I have to maintain her, I have financial responsibilities. It's more of a case of how am I able to um, fulfill my desires. And yeah. then after fulfilling my desires, you'll see that many guys will say this all the time, that once I fulfilled my sexual desires with the wife, the wife wants to now actually have a, you know, emotional moment with you after, yeah. you know, having fulfilled her sexual desires and your sexual desires. And, and what you have is, all of a sudden, the guy's like, well, you know what? I, can I go out with my friends now? Yeah, And I'm so done. some people, unfortunately, and sometimes innocently, when becoming a husband, it was more, I want to fulfill my desires Sorry. in a halal way, but without having the required understanding 
be it a small pep talk from someone who's a more mature figure, mm, mm. or the studying of the Islamic traditions, which will tell us about the the rights of the person that we're getting married to. Yes. You're not just you're not just marrying anyone. You're this is somebody else with um, with a vision as well for their future, who want to grow physically and spiritually and emotionally with you. And someone's so daughter. That, someone's daughter, fundamentally. Yeah. So that you've got on the one hand. Then on the other hand, you've got another area, which is forced into marrying somebody. Right. Which is another impediment into your obstacle to being a complete husband. Yeah. Because if you're being forced into marrying somebody, and sadly there are families who are like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are families who are like this. Yes. Those families who are like this, they're going to be forcing their daughters and in some cases forcing their sons. You have to marry your first cousin. You yeah. have to marry the second cousin. Yes. Or the girl herself may be saying that, listen, I just don't think he's mature. No, 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 he's good. I don't think he's ready. No, 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 the wealthy family, marry him. You'll, and You'll be in love later. And uh, be in love later. And so sometimes even the guy finds himself in a very sticky situation. And that sticky situation is that I don't really want to get married now. Now. Okay, I may be 29, and on average, 29 is seen as old in the Muslim community. Yes, yes. Yeah, but I still feel that I'm happy with my lifestyle. Yeah. I love traveling. I love being away with the lads. I'm not really sure that I've found someone who I look forward to coming home to. Yes. So that's the second area. Right. The third area is culture. Sure. Culture keeps pressurizing you. That you know what, you have to get married young, you have to get married young. And there are traditions which lean towards your completeness as a husband starts off by safeguarding your religion young. Right. But not everybody is the same. No, no, naturally. So you keep telling that person that, you know, half your religion is complete. There are, you know, all these fingers are not the same and no. the sons in your household are not the same. No. So you as the dad or the mom putting pressure on that person, when that person then divorces a few months later, you can't be turning around later and saying, mm, well, you know what, it's a shame what's happened. When that person clearly was giving you the hints that either I'm not ready or yes. why is the culture forcing me to do something which I don't really want to do. Yes. So moving from bachelor to being a husband, a person really has to sit back. And I do sometimes think there's unnecessary pressure in the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some non-Muslims who don't get married till 33, 34. And then after they get married at 34, they have some wonderful marriages. Whereas in the Muslim community already, while it's such a positive to promote safeguarding one's religion at a young age because it's very hard to maintain your balance with sexual desires Absolutely. and so on, yeah. I still feel that a person must recognize that change is going to come. And I think also the girl who is getting married, she's also got to be pretty blatant with the questions she's going to ask yeah, that person who's moving from bachelor so husband, listen, are you ready to actually give up on going out seven, uh, seven days yeah. a week? Yeah, yeah. And I might be exaggerating when I say seven days a week, but are you ready for the fact that, you know, we're, we're going to have a lot of responsibilities, there's going to be children coming into our life. I know you may be attracted to me physically, but it's not just about... Attraction. Attraction on the physical level, because once you've had, you know, the physical desires fulfilled, what then am I to you? Yes. Yeah. Am I someone you enjoy the convo with or no? Because yeah. the worst thing is living with someone who looks absolutely stunning, but conversations with her are so boring. Mm. And likewise on the other way. Well, you know, she could be one of the most stunning girls you'll ever see, but she's looking at the person and she's just like, I'm with this guy, but it's not interesting. No charisma, no this. Yes. So I think also part of that development has to come both sides. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But in terms of if I can call it homework, yeah. or research, or actually finding out the criteria. A, for me, for example, to make the right niyat. What is your niyat to, to go into marriage for, as it were? Is it really to be seek the proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Ahlul Bayt al Or is it, as you've mentioned, and you've hit the nail on the head, and many men have done this, and I'm sure many women have done this as well for wealth, have just gone there for looks or, you know, I'm ready now and, you know, let's just get on with it. So that aside, what do you think youngsters should be doing really now? And we'll come to the part actually of 
completing half the faith, as it were, on the wedding night. We'll come to that very shortly, but what do you think, very briefly, you know, singles should be looking for at the moment? Just because I think this is very important to actually project. I don't think in your early 20s, yeah. when you want to get married, your conception is necessarily as mature as saying, I'm doing this to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's many guys out there who are getting married in their early 20s, either because he wants to fulfill parts of his sexual desires, mm. or they found somebody who they feel, you know what, we click degree-wise, uni-wise, yeah, yeah. can build a house, couple of kids, we've got the basics of religion. And that, I don't think, is a problematic. Nor do I think it's problematic that somebody is purely looking for somebody who's a life partner. But I think there has to be a recognition that there are a number of responsibilities physically and spiritually that are going to emerge now. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to talk about areas such as الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم Allah says men are the maintainers of their wives. Mm -hmm. um, we've given you gifts in terms of your ability to go out there and work and earn a living, even though both of you, if you want, can do that. Yeah. And also we've given you a responsibility and that's you've got to financially maintain her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you may have to be doing two jobs, three jobs. Um, and if she is used to a particular type of lifestyle yes. from her parents' household, you're going to have to maintain that lifestyle, lifestyle. for her. Yeah. Um, so I think it's not in all cases that someone's saying, I'm getting married so I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather it just has to be more of a case of getting half your religion fulfilled has responsibilities. Okay. And those okay. responsibilities aren't just financial maintenance. You, st you might be used to throwing, um, you might be used to wearing unclean boxes for about eight days in a row. Mm -hmm. You might be used to not necessarily looking after, you know, your hygiene habits yep. when you're a bachelor boy. Yes. You know, yes. us guys sometimes we're, we're in our rooms and we're throwing things everywhere. Um, you don't really care if you've showered as much as you used to. You don't care about certain areas, deodorant all the time and so on. There are guys like that. Of course. Now, you are going to live with another human being. You don't mm. want the other human being to faint because of your lack of hygiene. Yes, yes. Or to look at you and say, what's wrong with this person? So I think what needs to be stressed is that there is meant to be a growth in you when you're becoming a complete Muslim husband where there's a sense of chivalry that grows. Right. What we call in Arabic, futuwa. Okay. Um, okay. A composite of noble virtues that suddenly right. grow in you. Okay. Moments of patience, moments of forgiveness, moments of uh, dialogue, moments of open-mindedness, moments of empathy mm -hmm. and love and, and so on. Those composites, you know, all virtues coming together, yes. I think are more important than just giving this very, um, what should I say, cliche statement, yeah, yeah, get absolutely. married so you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, yeah. so let, let me... Let me throw in uh, just a random name, as it were. So I've just thought of it now. Adam Ali. Adam Ali. So he's now moved from, big, you know, leaving bachelorhood, as it were. He's now married. Now let's go to the um, path, as it were, to completion, uh, which starts on the wedding night, yeah. as it were. Yeah. What sort of emphasis should be given to that? Well, I think a complete Muslim... For example, uh, Adam Ali. Sure. Uh, Adam Ali, if he wants to be on the journey of being a complete Muslim husband, mm. really should be ensuring that on his wedding night, and, um, and it's a wonderful night for all the families concerned, he should be ensuring that nothing is done which is disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. That is where you start setting the principles. Right. You can either have your girl, you know, you dancing in front of everyone with her, um, legally, you know, in Islamic law, it's not allowed. Um, sure. uh, or you grinding on your girl, uh, Islamic law doesn't allow it. Or you, for example, you've got some cultures, they, like the, for example, Lebanese culture, they may have uh, certain dances that they do where men and women are watching the men all dance each mm. other. Mm, whistling. Um, and so on. Again, if this is in terms of mixing, where they're all dancing, um, even if it's women just watching the men, um, dancing with one another, again you'll find the maraja, do not allow this. And then you'll see, for example, some will play um, music 
at okay. these weddings. Okay. And when you're playing music at these weddings, now I don't want to say music, we've got a, a, you know, a program on music coming up soon. Sure. I don't want to say music is a black and white issue. I think there's many shades of gray within okay. the discussion on music. But you know, there's certain music which you'd say, look, you know what, that is more seen as nasheed or folk or culture or kawali. But then there's some stuff which, you know, people getting up to dancing and, you know, Ruby. losing themselves. Mm. And the husband's just sitting there watching this happen. Your journey is already problematic. Because on that day when you do become a husband, you got to recognize that all of these attributes, all of these virtues are all meant to be shown in your gratefulness to your Lord, not yeah. your disobedience to your Lord. I find it very sad when I hear that certain people cannot complete a wedding without playing the, the music of certain musicians whose words differ with the teachings of Ahlul Bayt or whose words differ with the Qur'an. Um, and it's even sadder when you find that there are Muslim men and Muslim women dancing with one another mm. on their mm. wedding night. You as a husband, you want to be on that journey of completion. It begins from that night. Yes, yes. There are some Muslims who say, but it's a wedding night, everything is excused. Yeah. And as some say, the pens of the angels are not present. No, the pens of the <laughs> angels are present. And as we have many a tradition, which reminds us that there are certain places that angels do not enter because of our behaviors. Right. So some husbands who think that completeness of being a husband in Islam is about, well, I'll go to Hajj and I'll pray five times a day. No, sometimes the minor what some will call the minor sins become the biggest. Right. Uh, and, and so from that night, I think a husband who's an upright husband, who's got a bit of leadership about them, okay. will turn around and say that, you know what, let's not start our first night in the wrong way. Okay. Then there could be the other type of husband who's a wonderful Muslim husband. And it's the type of person who will say that also on that night, there are certain recommended acts that the Ahlul Bayt taught us. Okay, you know, it's sure. sad how some husbands and some wives are told on their wedding night, you know, there are some cultures which will say, show us the, the, the cloth of the bed to see if there's blood um, after you've had I sex see. or we see if the girl's a virgin or no. And that's yeah. disgraceful. It's, it it's absolutely ridiculous that people have to go through such things where you're told as a complete Muslim husband, you must have sex on the first night uh, that you get married and you are known as a husband. No, why? Firstly, both of you may be tired that night. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, that's if some haven't already had relations mm -hmm. from the engagement period. Secondly, why does it have to be that night? Why not slowly recognize and empathize? Sure. And if that empathy begins from that night, yes. where a person thinks about the feelings of, the, of their partner, okay. that we're both on a journey, if you're feeling tired, it's okay. If you're feeling the pressure, it's okay. Because it's the first time that you're away from your father's house. And there's that moment of empathy to recognize that, you know what, it's okay. Mm -hmm. There are ways in which we can get closer to one another, but we can also, on a night like this, there are recommended supplications. Yes, yes, yes. When the husband takes the lead at that moment, that's a, a Muslim husband who's ticking the boxes of completion. Mm. That while everybody else is more concerned of, oh, let's say good news in nine months, hold on one second. Let's first thank the Lord who blessed us with this yeah. night. And just to, just to add to that, I mean, you've mentioned a very good point, as it were, in terms of, you know, the holy Ahlul Bayt al-Islam have even gifted us with what sort of du'as and the very, um, yeah. you know, narratives to read, as it were, recommended acts. However, Sayyidina, that is subject to both parties, i.e. man and wife, having by default that love as it were. But again, if only one person has that, then it makes it quite difficult, doesn't it? I mean, Well, it's, it's no problem. Don't, you know, whatever you do on that wedding night, you don't have to be holier than no, no, everybody no, no, else. No, I think no. sometimes people go through those moments. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, let's go to being youngsters, as it were. Um, so if you can perhaps just enlighten me, uh, <coughs> if you don't mind, Sayyidina, what <coughs> cologne, perfume, oud do you like, as it were? I mean, because obviously to smell good is highly recommended. There's no extravagance, as it were, in spending that. So in terms of just beautifying yourself, 
um, having that decorum, what, what would you actually um, Well, say? I'd say that one of the first signs of the complete Muslim husband, they smell good. Right. Um, you know, you've, you've just moved in together. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing is, and sadly, it's not just when you've just moved in together. Sometimes it's even 10 years into the marriage, 20 years into the marriage. You've got husbands who clearly do not look after themselves. They may when they're going to a big function, but they take their wife for granted. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to a big function. Let's say they have a, they may invite someone else's wedding mm -hmm. or a meeting they have at work. That may be one of the few times that they actually wear something. Wear some aftershave perfume and so on. Whereas the complete Muslim man is smelling good 24-7. Honestly, and I, and you know, people will say 24 7. 24 7. Yeah, yeah. Because our Lord told us in Islam, Islamic thought that before every prayer, perfume we have the source. traditions perfume yourself. Yeah. How many times you go to a mosque and you'll see that they'll be giving this atar away? Yeah, yeah. And this atar, which is given away, is being passed on from hand to hand mm -hmm. so that there is this wonderful fragrance. And the worst thing for many Muslim women out there is when they're living with a husband, you can smell their sweat, B.O., no use of deodorants. On the basic level, it's, let's not go to you know, the best of fragrances, even though the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, allows israf when it comes to Perfect. perfuming ourselves. Naturally, naturally. But you'll find that that person he prays, and in the month of Ramadan, fasts, and is known by the people as Hajji mm -hmm. or Hajj. And when you smell him, you're like, God save me, I <laughs> beg you go put something on. Yeah, yeah. So here's something which I done earlier for the viewers. Okay. I had to recommend my favorite. I don't know if it's clear, not clear. There yes, you go, can is. you zoom in? It is. Can you zoom in, Mr. Cameraman? Or you can't zoom in. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, let me just hide my tattoo just in case somebody has to make a point about it. But here you've got Creed. And Creed Aventus. Mm. Very nice. People always ask me, you know, when you know Arabs love to kiss each other yeah, when they do. say that. People ask me, you know, what is it that you're wearing? And it's a source of pride for me to be somebody who's known to smell good. Being complimented. Um, Being complimented. Complimented. Yeah, and this totally. is part of chivalry Absolutely. as a as a man generally, yeah, but as a yeah. as a Muslim husband, are you smelling good or no? Yeah. Um Creed Aventus, don't worry, I'm not getting any commission <laughs> from Creed, although I, I'd welcome if they take me as a brand ambassador, why yeah, not? Yeah. Uh, considering there could be a few hundred thousand people who, who may end up buying it, but mm. this Creed Aventus for me, or I recommend some of our you know, males out there buy Creed Aventus, buy Molecule, mm -hmm. you know, buy the range of someone like Tom Ford, yeah, you know, the yeah. nice, nice pieces, Ten Halligans. Vetiver. You know, you've got the uh, perfumeries in London as well. Yeah. Um, go out and buy their range. You know, Roger, for example, R-O-J-A, Muslim men out there. <laughs> this is an announcement. Try and go and buy also the brand R-O-J-A. Roger. Wonderful smells. Yeah. A Muslim husband is somebody, when they walk into their household, the wife's like, come here yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. I want to hug you. And, 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 and that's what we want to build. So for me... Smelling good. Smelling good. Fundamental. Being clean. Being clean. What are you wearing? You know, making sure that even when you go to bed, you're dressing good. Yeah, yeah. You know, many of them will be like to their wives, um, why are you not wearing what I like when you're coming to bed? Buddy, look what you're wearing. <laughs> look what you're wearing. Yeah. Your boxer shorts don't look like boxers. Sure. Your boxers look like a balloon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. And in some cases, why don't you go? Go to Calvin Klein, go to Emporio Armani. Even, even, don't go to Calvin Klein, don't go to Emporio Armani, don't go to Dolce & Gabbana, go to Primark. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go to, I don't know, there's other stores. You could go, you could buy a packet of uh, 40 boxer shorts for like whatever, I don't know, um, 80 pounds. You don't have to spend big, but look good. Absolutely. You absolutely. don't tell your wife, have something figure hugging, yeah. while you're not wearing something which hugs the figure. And then that brings me on to the point about? Physique. Physique. Mm. Now, alhamdulillah, us two have okay physique sitting Alhamdulillah. here. Alhamdulillah. So I'm not going to be too... Um, harsh. Harsh. <laughs> we have good physiques. But fundamentally, a Muslim husband, 
looks after their physique. And that's missing. And you want to be a complete husband, you're telling your wife about physique. How about you? Yeah. How about you? Is it that difficult for the Muslim husband to go and sign up at their gym? Yeah. Yeah. Go sign up. And don't just sign up and go onto machines not knowing what you're doing. There's no harm having a personal fitness trainer. Trainer. Mm -hmm. There is no harm whatsoever watching YouTube and learning which machine is good for what. You know, I, I encourage the Muslim husbands to go out, look after their physique. The physique, in turn, looks after your stamina. Yeah. I'm not saying a person has to have a chiseled six-pack. No. But at least have a physique where you can fit into a suit. Now, I remember you. Let me tell the viewers something very <laughs> interesting here. Because, you know, we get some of the limelight. But Hamad over here, used to work for Prada. <laughs> Is that true or no? Yes, yes. And in the days when I used to try and go to the Prada section to buy something, not knowing that he's there, we bump into each other. Yeah, and absolutely. subhanAllah, our friendship Absolute. blossomed. Naturally, yeah. Naturally, because when he was at Prada, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, how many non-Muslim men have you met? Physique, what they eat, the perfume. When he's come with his wife to Prada, how good do they look? Yeah. Don't let people come and tell me these people aren't spiritual, they don't know about Ahl al they don't know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His wife looks at him with respect. respect. Yeah. That when he's walking, comes to Prada, he can take that suit off the peg. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying you have to buy from Prada. No, even no. <laughs> even the, the classic Italian will tell you that real Italians do not buy their suits off the peg. No. You get a tailor made. made. But when you're going, for example, Prada, or if you're going somewhere like Zara, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a there's a price difference, but look good. Look good. Look yeah. good. When your wife goes out with you, you got your shirt hanging out, your trousers are baggy, your suit, you've got the sleeves coming, yeah, and you might as well not show your fingers anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it's sad. It really is sad. And some people say this is just material. Part of our growth and development was seeing the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, their clothing was clean clothing. Right. The perfume was the most wonderful of smells. Yes. The physique. Badr, Uhud, Khaybar, Khandaq, Hunayn, Jamal, Safin, Nahrawan. Has there been a physique and a CV like Ali, son of Abu Talib's? Never. Has he ever been defeated on the battlefield? Never. What was his physique? Again, what does that come to? The complete Muslim, Muslim husband Muslim. watching what they eat. Eat, yes. Diet is crucial. I'm not going to come no and sit here and say that the complete Muslim husband has to be somebody who who is on a vegan diet or a vegetarian or organic only or cannot have those cheap meals or junk food. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, you've had some garlic, bro, go chew some gum. Absolutely. Bro, don't sit KFC, McDonald's, junk food every single day. No, no. Try and maintain balance. Yes. There are some who are out there, they speak about the religion of Islam. They speak about the religion of Islam. And they give you khutbah of this and Imam Ali said live like this. And they'll tell you, look at this. You look at him, you don't know the top part and the bottom part of the body, where does it begin? Because yeah. it's like a square walking. Some even have these man, what do they call them? The man boobs now, <laughs> not looking after themselves. Yeah. And it's a shame that a person who admires <laughs> Habib ibn Madahir, Muslim ibn Awsaja, Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi, Abtal al-Safa, Fursan, Luyuth. Look at the names that Imam al Hussein gives them. Abtal, Fursan, Luyuth. Tell me how many of our people Today, a Muslim husband, can you say, you know, that that is a Faris, a Laith, a Batal? You look at him, you're like, this guy, if you make him run for five yards, he'll maybe have a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, I'm I, uh, sorry if I've gone on a bit of a rant. No, but no. There no. are Muslim wives out there who have been oppressed, made fun of, ridiculed by a man who sees himself as a complete Muslim husband. Yeah. But who has let themselves go? Yes. And Islam taught us eat properly mm -hmm. at certain times, fast, fast on certain days. Yes. What you eat, chew it. Don't have too much. Don't be full. Don't make your stomach a graveyard for animals, which was the biggest indicator that you should try to have between a four and six pack. You know, and, and so what Islam was trying to say that, Islam was saying that so that we walk around with a presence. Yeah, absolutely. Really, we walk around with a presence. Yes. You know, I give, you know, when people see my majalis in Muharram, 
and I'm honored to wear, you know, the abaya and and the dishdasha and so mm-hmm. on. I'm honored, and it's, it really is a humbling form of clothing, spiritual form of clothing. But I'm equally honored to be in an Italian or French suit any day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not something I see as un-Islamic. No, no, no. I think the t- the word decorum mm. and uh, apparel. Um, is definitely deficient in you know in some uh, people as it were the interior and the exterior are equally important th- th- I love this line yeah interior and exterior yeah many of our Maulanas in our mosques he's talking about maintaining yourself as a Muslim he's talking interior Maulana your stomach the way it's hanging <laughs> out you've forgotten your exterior okay. really yes. it's a Mitchell entire advert yeah and some you'll hug the Mawlana and this person's told you Ali, Hassan, Hussein, Zain al-Abidin, Ali, is telling you about all of them. You hug them and you smell, you're like, oh my Lord, is it difficult just for you, Mawlana, just to put some deodorant yeah, on? Yes, yeah. And, and, and that's where that, com- that person on the path to being a complete Muslim husband can easily turn around and say, listen, if the leaders of the religion, and you know, Christianity and other faiths face this problem. Okay. You know, uh, Francis of Assisi is seen as a great, but I think there's certain indications that smell-wise it wasn't the greatest, or, or cleanliness-wise wasn't the best. Yes. There were certain people of the church who decided they would not wash themselves. The Quran mentions in Surah Al-Hadid, a rahbaniya, a mon- monasticism, okay. a form of asceticism or something, yeah, sure. which was innovated. You know, Islam never said don't wash yourselves. And if you don't wash yourselves, you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think the leaders of our mosques, when you hug that leader, he is the one who sets the precedent. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. If that person, no you're hugging them as a man of God. Yeah, that you're looking up to. You're looking up to. And you want to be the complete yeah. Muslim husband. And you've hugged them. The breath smells bad. Some, yeah. some Muslim woman out there, their husbands want to be the complete Muslim husband? Breath, smoker's breath. Mm. He smokes, smokes, smokes. Okay, if you're going to smoke that much smoke, brush your teeth three times a day. Yeah. How many traditions are there about brushing brush the teeth. teeth? Numerous. And Especially. not just brush your teeth with a normal brush. Go and get those brushes, which are, you know, the, the vibrating machines. Revolving ones. Revolving yeah, ra- yeah, ones. Yeah. They yeah. may cost you a bit extra, but it's yeah. worth it. Okay, so now we're just going to go to a break. Inshallah, join us again in the next moment or two. Thank you. Salaam alaikum. Assalamualaikum and welcome back to tonight's live show on Imam Hussain TV where we're actually examining the images of men in Shia tradition, the role of a complete husband as it were. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Just a um, quick recap, just prior to the break we looked at, you know, in fair depth as it were, um, smells as it were, the need as it were to maintain yourself interior wise and exterior wise as an example not just to Muslims, but to non-Muslims as well, and not specifically, obviously, your wife. You know, it's smelling good. Um, now, just let's move now forward into a little bit of time, as it were, into marriage. So, Adam Ali is married, as it were, but he really hasn't changed his mindset. He hasn't got out of that mode that, you know what, this dude, me, myself and I, I am married now, but it's cool to go away with the lads, <coughs> uh, you know, on on a trip or holiday, or leave the kids behind. What do you have to say about that? I, I think that's that's two, uh, yeah. I think there's two important things. Um, it's all about a healthy balance. Yeah, yeah. You know, and a person in their path to becoming a complete Muslim husband 
There is no such thing as I cannot go away with my friends. No. Friendship is so important in the religion of Islam that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, while married, went away on a number of occasions mm -hmm. with his friends in the service of the religion, for yes. example. Yes, yes, yes. You know, when you're going away on certain expeditions, you're not taking, um, you know, your wives with you on these expeditions. Yes, some narrations mention one wife would go with the Holy Prophet. Right. But you're, you're not exactly going to take everybody with you. And, and so anyone who imagines that a complete Muslim husband is someone who cannot go away with their friends anymore, I think sometimes that stifles their, their development. Okay. Because if you're going to tell your husband, and I must make this clear that, you know, while I've come down viciously on, on some husbands who have, you know, not looked after themselves at all, there are some wives out there who, when it comes to the husband, it's like, no, I don't want you to go away with your friends. You're always with your friends. Okay, going where? Yeah. Let's see. Going ziyara, going hajj, or going to, for example, uh, other resorts, let's mm. say, which are not part of the so-called spiritual growth of the human being. Yeah. That person going away with their friends, there can be a healthy balance in both trips. A person can go to a resort with their friends. A person can go ziyara with their friends. None of them are impediments, as long as there is a balance in also going away with your wife. And I say going away with your wife, yeah. not necessarily going away with the wife and kids. Right. See, sometimes you'll get a wife saying, doesn't show me any attention. I ask the husband, and I tell him, listen, why don't you two go away? Have a second honeymoon. Mm -hmm. He's like, she doesn't want to go away except when the kids have to be with us. Yeah. I ask her, do the kids have to be with you? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, hold on, hold on. Why can't why? the kids be with your parents yes. and you two just go and chill on the holiday exactly. island miles away from everything? Absolutely. So hold on, who's the problem in the search for being a complete husband? Because I think a complete husband is somebody recognizes that marriage, the spark can go on, off, on, yeah, off. Yeah, absolutely. And then they take the lead in saying, either we plan something or we impulsively act. Let's see the difference between the two. Planning a holiday, for example, you say that, listen, us two will go alone. Yeah. Let's try and rekindle. Because anyone who thinks that that same flow mm. or spark is going to be um, seen is, is, is not real. No, 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 no. It's no not way. permanent. You've no got to work pressures are coming in. It's yeah, not easy. Yeah, yeah. But you, as the complete Muslim husband, yeah. should be somebody who turns around and says, you know what? Me and you will go away. And sadly, I've seen divorces happen mm. because the couple didn't ever go away again alone. No, yes, yes. And I'm not always going to blame the wife because sometimes you're the one who should turn around and say. Now some, I'll be very frank, some guys when they go away with their wife do get bored very quickly. Okay. And there are some who may sit in restaurants going away with their wives where both are on WhatsApp the whole time. Yeah. Still, go away with each other and try and find even that moment of looking at in each other's eyes. Yeah, absolutely. It's very important. One of the most beautiful things you could tell your wife, even if you're not talking the whole night, just to look at her in her eyes as a Muslim husband and say, I love you, yeah. was a hadith from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, where he says that that will not leave the heart. No. There are many out there, they think it's not macho. Yeah, yeah. You absolutely. know, saying I love you or sending nice messages, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and don't send text messages when you have to or WhatsApp messages when you have to. You can also do things impulsively. Yeah, and I think absolutely. sometimes part of the journey of being a complete Muslim husband is working on impulse. Okay. When I say working on impulse, what I mean by that is all of a sudden telling your wife, for example, you're yep. alone at home, let's say, and you just have that moment of sexual pleasure with each other. It doesn't have to be in the bedroom. No. Right. But there are some, no, only in the bedroom, at night, mm. that's it, there's no impulse. There are times you don't have to go away on holiday to have special moments, even if you book the cheapest hotel, but you have a laugh in that hotel. Yes. You know, yeah. just around the corner. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you have a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's moments of impulse where all of a just sudden you natural. can just text them. Be Being natural. Natural, but also, yeah. it, it sometimes can bring about a different side yeah. to the whole, let's plan, this is date night. Yes. You know, you've seen some who will say that this is date night. What do you mean this is date night? I have to have date night with my wife on Tuesdays and Friday. What's your wife? Yeah. Well, you're a robot. <laughs> Why does it have to be on certain days? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There may be six weeks of date nights and six months of no date nights, but you can still kindle something. Sure. sure. Okay. 
So now we're just um, going to be reading out some questions. Uh, viewers, do call in. The telephone number for the landline is 0203 515 You can also text in via WhatsApp your questions. And the WhatsApp telephone number is 07939 917163. So now, um, so there's two questions. Salam, regards to my inspiration, Imam Akshwani. Just a quick question. What was the diet pattern of Imam Ali, al-Islam, and Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the second question is, Salam alaikum Sayyid Amar Nakshwani uh, from Pakistan. Can you explain the reason why man is restricted to four marriages while the Prophet, peace be upon, upon him, did 11 marriages? Ask him from Pakistan. Okay, in terms of the first question, yeah. uh, the diet, diet of mm. the Ahl al-Bayt. I, th I think Quranically you've, also, you, you've got this recognition of certain foods which have always been um, recommended, recommended and healthy yeah. and and so when you're talking of a teen was a tune as a basic yeah, example yeah, yeah. the fig the olive, olive recognition of the importance of milk okay. there is also stories honey. involving you know uh, honey and so on and how the bees mm. are a miracle of the Lord and how God inspires them to make their houses and mountains and trees and so on I think you notice that with the Ahlul Bayt salam, from the Prophet all the way to um, the Imam of our time that these are fundamental foods in their life. But one thing which you'd find is they're not overeaters. Mm. Gluttony, is not, gluttony is not part of their uh, behavior. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam, you know that final conversation that he has before he is struck in the mosque in Kufa by Abd al-Shaytan, uh, son of Muljim. And Imam Ali alayhi salam, tells his daughter, when have you known your father to have such a great meal? And if you're looking at it, it's like some hard bread yeah, yeah. with some yogurt and so on. So dates, those organic, you know, hard dry brown bread, you know, some milk, yes, very, yes, natu yes, very natural, yes, yes. lovely organic um, menu that they have. And loving meat, mm -hmm. but not making their stomachs graveyards for animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we've forgotten um, and that doesn't mean to say we should go back and live primitively on just bare salt and <coughs> rock hard bread. But yeah. I think we have forgotten really the meaning of good diet, as it were. There's organic food, there's fruit and so on and so forth that people really just don't make enough time for. And as you alluded to earlier on in the program, you know, there's sitting at halal KFC or chicken burgers and so on and so forth. And people perhaps have just really let themselves go. Yeah. as it were, due to stress, stresses, as it were, pressures, and so on and so forth. Um, now, the next point um, that I'd like to make is basically, without using in a derogatory term, but really for man to be complete, as it were, as a husband, it is also said that, you know, he may take his wife as it were, as a slave, as it were. What does it mean by that, as it were, you know, taking for granted that Okay, I'm assuming that she's going to do this and so on. So how should he? Yeah, there are there, there are clearly in mm -hmm. our cultures men who perceive, as it were, vision. Yeah, they, they see the wife as a slave yeah. at home. Yeah, that's my mom. You got to cook for her. You got to clean for her. You got to wake up when she wakes up. You got to sleep when she goes to sleep. Yeah, that's my dad, and it's the whole concept of this living with the in-laws. Mm. You as a Muslim husband, firstly cannot force your wife to be living with your parents. No. You as a wife should also be very clear whether you want to live with parents absolutely, or not. Absolutely, absolutely. But some wives, innocently, they will go and want to live with the parents. They believe that they can build their relationship. Now, that husband has to be somebody who doesn't neglect the emotions of the wife. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There can be a case where the wife is bullied at home. For no reason, just culture, not religion. Yeah. Yeah. And sadly, there are many who have been abused. Abused, and there are many husbands who took out their venom mm -hmm. on their wives, who they forced to live with the elderly parents, saying that we're going to do this, and you're going to have to cook for them all the time and clean everything for them, and can never raise your voice, even if my parents are wrong. wrong. Now, listen, buddy. There's nothing Islamic about what you've just said to her. That's oppression. Yeah. Even if your wife is very patient, hear what she's got to say as well. Don't neglect her. Mm -hmm. 
the easiest thing to do is to tell this lady, who you know is weak in the sense of her position, that society, if she gets divorced, is going to forget her, yeah. is to tell her that, you know what, these are my parents, I love them, you don't like it, get out of this house. No. A person engages in dialogue. You Di see, dialogue, yes. the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, fundamentally would say, an hour of dialogue with your wife is greater than i'tikaf in my mosque in Medina. Now, how many are there out there who want to be in the mosque of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family in Medina? We all want to go ziyara. Yeah. We want to go to the ziyara of the grave of the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family. Yes. yes. We want to sit there. We want to read Quran. We want to read supplications. We want to do tasbih and dhikr. Mm. And the Prophet tells us, peace be upon him, and his family, an hour of dialogue with your wife, with your wife is greater than that i'tikaf in my mosque in Medina. I remember I, I, I said a joke once in a lecture that notice how specific the time is. The Prophet says an hour, because he knows after that becomes a bit of a headache. But yeah. for the beginning, it's okay, one hour. <laughs> but joking aside, one hour of dialogue. Now sometimes, the wife, when she's talking to you, it's not so much she expects you to find a solution. It's just she wants to know that you're all ears, ears and, and you listening. feel her listening. Yeah. Some assume that when the wife is talking to the husband and wants to bring up an issue, that there and then they must find a solution. No. That moment she, the daughter of somebody else, not next to her dad and mom, maybe even an orphan, maybe not even an orphan, mm -hmm. but maybe the dad's passed away, mom's passed away. You are everything for her. Yeah. You know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, what a phenomenal husband he was. That even when his wife Hafsa, daughter of Omar, decided to divulge her secret to Aisha, wife of Abu Bakr, in Surah 66, verse number 3 of the Quran. Right. He taught us a number of lessons. Number one, let's hear what they've got to say. Number two, talk with them without getting angry. Number three, keep the door of forgiveness open. Open. For the complete Muslim husband keeps the door of forgiveness open for their wife. Yeah, yeah. And that's why the Quran would say, In tatuba, if both of you repent to Allah, faqad sagat qulubukumah. Yes, okay. So the door of forgiveness is always open. Okay, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you for that. So now we have a question. Salam from London. Why do men have to be the main providers in the family? Is there an issue if the wife or another woman is the main provider? No issue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But I still think if you're looking at a survey of the majority of the world, yeah. Latin America, Africa, India, as well as Europe, North America and Australasia, yeah. you'll still find the main breadwinner in a marriage is the man. man. A woman, for example, can go out and work. Yeah. And she can certainly help build that marriage. But the responsibility has been laid on the shoulders of the man. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Salam. How should women deal with narcissistic husbands who have little regard for their wives and focus far too much on themselves? So we've obviously discussed this in, in bite sizes, as it were. Um, narcissistic husbands who have little regard for their wives and focus I have far to, too much. Uh, yeah, some may be called narcissistic, hmm. and they're only concerned about, you know, how do I look, my image, my this, my that. Mm -hmm. But the wife does sometimes have to ask herself, yeah. is it purely his narcissism or am I not looking after myself the way I used to? Okay, okay. <coughs> now I know it's not difficult with all the responsibilities and then pregnancy and then emotions physically and the emotional baggage that comes with pregnancy and post-pregnancy. Yeah. <coughs> but you know what? turns your husband on mm -hmm. in the sense of what brings that spark again and also there may be certain areas where communication between the two is vital yeah, what I mean sure. by that is the husband if you know your wife enjoys a certain topic talk with her about it open up discuss with her mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember a story there was a husband him and his wife have gone on a honeymoon to San Francisco. Okay. You've been to San Francisco? No, no. Yeah, I've been to San Francisco. I lectured in a community there. Okay. And you've got the famous bridge there. Mm. Now this guy, he loved bridges. 
His life is bridges. Right. This bridge in this country, that's the longest bridge, that's the tallest bridge, that's the highest bridge, that's this, this bridge. This bridge. The wife's like, all this guy ever chats about is bridges. For the <laughs> love of God, I beg you, change the topic. You as a Muslim husband have a role in changing and also what things she likes. Anyway, bridge, 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 bridge. But they've come to San Francisco. And she's told him, all you ever chat about is bridges. He's like, listen, don't worry. You know what? We're on our holiday. No more. That night, he's like, I'm going to take you to the most romantic place you'll ever see. Right. She's like, truly that night? He took me to a particular place. The moon was shining bright. It was shining. And he put his hands around my waist. And while yeah. he put his hands around my waist, mm -hmm. he is looking, I'm looking. He's like, look how beautiful it is. And I was like, you're so right. It looks wonderful. He's like, it's shining. It's majestic. And she's like, yes, it is. She's thinking he's talking about the moon. He's like, that bridge in San Francisco is <laughs> the greatest I've ever seen. Now, you've got this moment. It's a yeah. delicate moment. Yes, yes. But you as a wife also, you've got to know. Listen, mm. for example, I know myself. Yes, yeah. That when Liverpool is playing, <laughs> don't come and bring up an issue. Disturb you. <laughs> Please. It's not my narcissism that, you know what, I, you got to give me my time and I, all it's about myself and nothing more than more. My football club's playing. Mm -hmm. In these 90 minutes, I'm begging you yeah. that if I did forget my shorts next to the bed or through my toothbrush in the wrong way or forgot the toilet seat up, down, down, up, up, down, please don't bring it up now. Yeah, yeah. Because you bringing it up now, as much as I'm trying to be a complete Muslim husband, Wrong time. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you now, um, thank you for that. Um, viewers, do call in. The telephone number is 0203 515 0199. And you can also WhatsApp your questions 07939 917 163. WhatsApp questions again 07939 917 163. Um, so you now, we have another question. Salam alaikum. I have converted to Islam two and a half years ago. My husband and adult daughters are still Christians. Is my va marriage still valid? You know, in these situations, these are very sensitive matters. Mm. The Quran praises the Christians as the closest people to Muslims. In chapter 5, verse 82. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim la tajidanna aqrabahum mawaddatan lilladheena amanu lilladheena qalu inna nasara You'll find the closest people to you in reciprocal love are the Christians. For they have priests and monks who are humble mm -hmm. personalities. And I saw this humility, as you know, I was in Rome this weekend at the Pontifical Institute. And I saw the humility of the fathers in Rome, especially Father Christopher Cloessi, who I give a special mention to. Right. But in Islamic law, a Muslim woman being married to a non-Muslim man is prohibited. The father at the end of the day, we don't want to say head of the household to put down from the status of the woman. Okay. But the children are influenced by the faith of the father. And the father can remain Christian. And the children can remain Christian. It's up to them. Right, right. And if the father reverts, the marriage continues. Mm -hmm. But if the father is adamant, then you find that in that situation, we would have to hear both sides, sit with everybody, and try and see how we can possibly find a solution. Yeah. Right, okay, fine. <coughs> what do you think, this is quite important, I think, mm. the role should be for a complete husband to be, inshallah, to raise his children, as it were. Because we've already covered mm. in the last two weeks the nurturing, emotional, love, loving qualities that this isn't a detrimental comment to women the nurturing abilities that women possess it's her fitra is her nature but what do you think men should do as it were to contribute to the tarbiyat as it were to rearing up their children to what lessons can they lead if for example they are to be the natural leaders as it were of the household Sometimes the complete Muslim husband doesn't have to say anything. The kids just look at the mannerisms with mum and that's enough. Mm. 
when they see that there's no contradiction in the behavior with people outside of the house and with mom. Yeah, right. There are some husbands with the people outside of the house, you can't stop them talking. Okay. You can't stop them talking, no. joking, laughing, laughing, yeah, joking. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they come home to their wife, there's no communication. Hmm. The kids pick up on that. Yeah, sure. There are some husbands in front of the people, they'll never raise their voice. With mom, they'll raise their voice. Yeah. The kids pick up on that. The Muslim husband, behaviors cannot be contradictory. And sometimes they don't need to say anything. The kids will look at the behavior. Dad's gone to pray. Prayer is important. You can't be coming telling your son, why don't you read Quran? And you yourself never pick up the Quran. Yeah. Okay. Likewise, that complete Muslim husband is the one mm -hmm. who will take the kids to the wonderful holiday resorts and theme parks and football and so on, but also will take them Umrah, Ziyarah. Yeah. We'll go and visit the Ahlul Bayt. It's sad that there are sons and daughters out there who never once went to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam with any of their parents. Yeah. It's sad yeah, that there are kids out there, and even some in their 20s and 30s, never went to Imam Musa al Kadhu, Imam al Jawad, never went to Imam al Rada alayhi salam with their father. <coughs> yeah. And the most beautiful feeling is being able to go with your parents. To Ziyar. I've been fortunate to have gone to different maraqid and different sites in honor of the Ahlul Bayt with my parents from a young age. Alhamdulillah. From a young age, like from age of a few years old, having been to say the Zainab alayhi salam, and then a few years later having spent Umrah with my father, going alone, me and my father. Alhamdulillah. You know, no, no friends. Yeah. <coughs> my mom didn't come. Uh, no, just me and my father. And sometimes there needs to be that father-son relationship. Bond, yes. And then also going to Imam al-Rada's haram. Subhanallah. Because remember, I would say in the first 20 years yeah. of my life, I couldn't go back to Iraq. Yes. Because of the Ba'athist regime. Yes. But then, in those first 20, my father and my mother would compensate with Ziyar of Imam al-Rada, Ziyar of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, and Ziyar of the Imams of Baqi. Subhanallah. And I think the father, the complete Muslim husband, uh -huh. is not just one who's paying for the private school tuition. Because some husbands will do that. You know what they'll say? Yeah. They'll say, you know what a husband I am? Who's paying all this? Who's paying all that? Mm. Buddy, sometimes you've built this enormous house. I'd have just preferred if you took your son with you to Majlis al Hussein. Yeah, absolutely. Or to Majlis of... Not Muharram, there are fathers. The complete Muslim husband is not just Muharram. No, no. Complete Muslim husband will tell their son or their daughter, Imam al-Askar is Mawlud is coming. Mm. Let's go to the mosque Absolutely. together. Let's listen to the majlis together. Let's talk with people together. Sure, so now thank you for that. Uh, two questions. Um, Salaamu Alaikum. Um, um, this, right, the message is as follows. Why, um, if mothers are raising the husbands, if mothers are raising the children, um, then you know why do why does the husband still have to care, as it were, of the ch about the children? Who said that uh, mothers are the ones who only raise the children? The husband has a fundamental role. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you're looking Quranically, then you'll find, for example, in the story of Luqman. Right. Luqman has this wonderful six, seven verse conversation in Surah 31 of the Quran, which is named after him, with his son. Right. Okay. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانَ لِإِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِضُهِ يَا بُنَيْ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنٍ وَفِصَالُ فِي عَامَيْنٍ And then after that, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكْ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ And then after that, you've got the um, then after that you've got about how you talk and that don't raise your voices and don't walk arrogantly. That's Luqman with his son. Mm -hmm. Ibrahim mm -hmm. with Ismail. Complete Muslim husband does not leave Hajar to bring up Ismail alone. There is a wonderful bond. Yeah, yeah. Ya Bunay, inni araf al-manam. 
أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا أبت فعل ما تؤمر ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين So you got this wonderful husband, wife, Ibrahim Hajar, husband, son, father, son. Okay. So don't ever imagine that there is this thing that for you to be a complete Muslim husband is to tell the wife, you take them majalis, you take them to the madrasa, you take them ziyara. No, you have a role as well. Yeah, yeah. It can't just always be thrown at the mother while the father is negligent. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why does the faith, this is just probably continued from that, why does the faith of the father matter so much if the mother does all the raising? So it may be the same person. Well, if it's the faith of the father, at the end of the day, you believe God is three, he believes God is, she believes God is one. Mm -hmm. If it's intra faith, you believe that certain companions you admire, she, for example, believes they were involved in certain things. So it's better to have the husband and the wife in unison with one another mm. spiritually as to where they're heading. Right, next question. Salam, I would like to know if the wife does not want to live. I would like to know if the wife does not want to live with the man's parents, but <coughs> the man wants to switch countries and go back to serve his elderly parents. Is the wife obliged to end her life, end her living life, as it were, abroad and shift back with her husband to live with his elderly parents? So I suppose in a nutshell that is, <coughs> Is she compelled to listen to her husband? No. Obliged? No. Right. But it would be a very meritorious act mm. to help your husband in the service of Allah by looking after the parents. Yeah. But can you say that she's forced to? No, but their relationship hopefully has reached a level oh, where same. if it happened the other way, yeah. where her parents were in need, say he was an orphan, mm -hmm. mother and father died and he was young, her parents, <coughs> now elderly, you'd hope it, the other way she has to look in the mirror and ask that if my parents had no one for them, yeah. would he do this? Sure. And if the answer is yes, then there is no harm reciprocating yeah, that love. Absolutely. Salam alaikum Sayyid, kindly comment on husbands who verbally, verbally abuse their wives and call them names. Yes. How would this behavior change? It's very common in the indo pak community, sadly. Thank you. It's disgraceful. Yeah. It's disgraceful and far away from the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Which Imam of Ahlul Bayt did you hear? Swearing or call claims. his wife names. Yeah. Even Imam Al Baqir alayhi salam, whose wife cursed Imam Ali alayhi salam, he did not call her names. <coughs> Show me the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family. Which of them? And you're coming and the Qur'an says, and you're going against the Qur'an, which means that there's no way you're on the path of completion. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum. Wala nisa'un min nisa'in asa an yakunna khayran minhunna. Wala talmizu anfusakum, wala tanabazu bil alqab. When the Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah 49, verse 11 was telling us, don't let one nation make fun of another. Don't let women make fun of other women. And also don't put nicknames on them. This was yeah. all giving us mm -hmm. moral injunctions <coughs> okay. and guidelines and principles. Okay. okay. And the Prophet would say, the best of you is the one who's the best to his family. Mm. And I am the best to my family. SubhanAllah. Can one wife of the Prophet ever say that he called her names? Even when one of the wives called Safiya that you are a Jewish woman because of your ancestry. Okay. The Prophet wouldn't come back ridiculing or mocking and did not like such behavior. Mm. And if we claim to be followers of Ahlul Bayt, listen, if buddy, if you're not a follower of Ahlul Bayt, <coughs> or you don't ever call yourself a follower of Ahlul Bayt, then do what you want. But when yeah. you're a follower of Ahlul Bayt, you're their representative. Absolutely. Stay away from such no immorality. Doubt. No doubt. And yeah. that, that's it's very <coughs> nicely put, because obviously being that representative, just going back right to the beginning of tonight's show, means your akhlaq, smelling good, looking good, being that example, being good at home to your wife. No, I, I, th I personally think, it's, it's all Wallah Haji Muhammad, yeah. I believe, there has to be a whole revolution mm. within Shiism as to the ideal man. man. Yeah. I don't want to call it the GQ man. No. no. Because the connotations 
will end up in us getting emails from the same people who will email us until we go to the grave. But yeah. <coughs> the connotation may be, but I believe that the Shia man with those wonderful role models in Islam, there is a certain uprightness, chivalry, dignity, masculinity mm. that we have to begin to reassess yeah. whether it's gone missing or not. Yeah, there's a quick question here. I think this is probably going to be the last question tonight. Um, I would be grateful if you could ask Sayed another question. I have heard from someone, this is a really good question actually, from Imam Ali al-Islam. Um, I've heard uh, from someone that Imam Ali al-Islam used specific du'as before exercise or exercising. Is it true? Can you enlighten us, please? And that's from Imran Hussein Shah. As for the specific supplications before exercising, uh -huh. I must admit, I do not have the knowledge of that. Okay. And if I, if I can come back next week, Inshallah. having done my research on that, yeah. As for particular martial arts that go back to Imam Ali alayhi salam, that we have traditions on Subhanallah. about the skills and chivalry and the combat. The samurais are in awe of the majesty of Ali son of Abu Talib. But as for those supplications before he exercised, I'm not sure what those supplications okay, are. Okay, yeah. I think uh, Sayyidina, we've run out of time. Viewers, uh, thank you very much indeed for watching us today. Inshallah, hopefully you've been enlightened by um, Dr. Sayyid Aman Akshwani. Do join us again next week, Inshallah, and hopefully we can continue this topic in, which is the images of men in Shia tradition, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum from Dr. Sayyid Aman Akshwani and myself, Muhammad Ali.